Good morning, students. Uh, we welcome all of you uh, to this uh, webinar on harnessing customer networks. We just wait for some more time before we start because it's not 10 o'clock yet. But uh, I'm requesting all the students to just go to chat and uh, say hello to all of us, uh, to everybody in the room, and also type where you're from. Can you do that? Can you just type from which city you are logging in from so that I think all of us will know. I've just got one response from Sona Venkatapadi and uh, some of our faculty faculty members coming in good morning sir good morning how are you fine sir thank you sir how are you sir fine fine thank you i think let's just start uh, chatting ma'am okay i can see pooja lakshmi from uh, logging in from calicut the power of uh, digital right so we are geographically separate but we are yet conducting all our classes and everything I think uh, this is the new normal that we have to accustom to. Even after opening, you know, even after opening up, I think we should embrace these digital engagements so that we can get people from uh, all walks of life and from different areas. Hello, Purnima. You're from Palladam. Glad to have you here. Ajay Krishnan from Trivandrum, Kerala. Good. I can see Yamini, ma'am. Jomol Joshi is from Kerala. Again, Tirichur. So we have people just coming in. Uh, we have 17. How many participants are we expecting today? I can't hear you, sir. Why don't you just type in the uh, chat? Vishal is just Vishal has just entered. Hello, Vishal. Where are you from? Why don't you just type in the chat and say where you're from so that all of us know. Good morning, Vishal. Where are you from? From which city are you? From Tirupur. Okay, cool. We have uh, Anjali Uday Kumar. Hello, Anjali. Good morning. Where are you from? Why don't you just type there in the chat box? Where are you logging in from? I think all of us should get to know each other. This is this is a wonderful way to kind of know where all of you are from. And so, Tulsi, sir, you're right. We are uh, slow in uh, embracing. Uh, so, I don't normally... 20 students normally attend. Okay. Gautam is from Tirupur again. Good morning, Gautam. I hope the situation in Tirupur is getting but, uh, better, right? Is it as bad as uh, Coimbatore in terms of COVID? Uh, Tulsi, sir, you might want to choose uh, to everyone in the meeting because uh, your chat is coming private. Hello, Madan. Madan is from Palani. Wonderful, Madan. Glad to have you here. Sir, a kind reminder, sir. 10 o'clock, yes. please. Uh, shall we wait for a few more minutes? Uh, uh, we'll just uh, wait for a few more. People are coming in, right? So yes, we have... Okay, okay. Uh, I understand, sir. Uh, we'll see, sir. That is a private information for me. Okay. Madan Arjun. We have uh, Gautam from Tirupur. So other students are just coming in. So students, uh, uh, how do you find these uh, information uh, or this orientation... Uh, orientation sessions. I think uh, we have now, we have had uh, lectures on two verticals. One is on digital musings, where we were talk, where we are talking about how digital technologies are actually helping businesses create a lot of value. And the other one we are focused so far is on Excel. Okay, So I don't, we are not expecting you to have mastered these concepts uh, immediately. But uh, the reason why we are doing these sessions is to just expose you these two so that uh, by the end of two years, you'll, you'll kind of have a big picture view. And also in the process, you will acquire some tangible skills. So Excel is a very, very, very important skill. I cannot emphasize it any more than this because if you know, we have two very elaborate and extensive Excel courses, which are made as independent study. If you can master those two Excel courses, I think uh, your value in the job market will increase drastically. You know, a lot of uh, finance jobs rely almost exclusively on Excel. And many companies are doing analysis, even <laughs> statistical, marketing, financial, and uh, operation analysis using Excel alone. Uh, some of you might have used Excel in your undergraduate work, but uh, I would say that you have probably just touched the uh, tip of the iceberg. It's extremely powerful. You can program in Excel. You can do a lot of statistical analysis, financial analysis, and uh, you can create wonderful models. The finance students who are specializing in finance will, at the end of last semester, you'll undergo a course called uh, financial modeling, and you'll understand how powerful Excel can be uh, in the finance domain. So try and uh, give serious attention to Excel, especially if you're looking 
looking to go to the job market right after your uh, you know graduation not only uh, jobs but i think uh, even uh, are starting your own business it is even more important because you can do almost all the analysis required for your business using excel alone and that's why we have uh, kind of uh, put together such a elaborate course on excel so there are two very deep courses but we will hand holding you extensively okay? so try and uh, give your attention to it so satish can we start sir uh, can we start okay so today's topic is harnessing customer networks in the in my first sir, session second. yeah there's always some technical glitch or the other we are sharing this uh, presentation live on facebook and we have a page called rvs seraguhal i'll share that slide at the end of my presentation these videos will be there for you to go back and to review some of the concepts if you want uh, it will be helpful for you at the end of your first or last semester we if some of you are interested we can help you do a live project for a real company on digital transformation so the benefit of uh, doing such a project is let's say you don't have to go to a very big company you can just go to a let's say a bike dealer uh, hero honda or yamaha or uh, even car dealership and if you can just analyze the business and if you can do a presentation to them about how they can use this digital technologies to improve their business uh, performance you will immediately get a job i can assure you that we are just exposing you to all these uh, digital transformation uh, concepts some or some of you might be interested to do a project uh, either at the first or uh, really at the end of last semester by which time you many uh, more concepts under your belt and we will hand hold you in the project and uh, it is our earnest desire that at least few of you choose that option do a real real customer you can just create a lot of value and uh, without even an interview i can say that uh, they will hire you because these skills are not available in the market especially down south uh, on non metro cities these are very very hard skills businesses will definitely value those skills having said said that waiting for our team to go live on facebook are we live somebody has raised the hand okay uh let's start so welcome uh, students and uh, i welcome the rest of the participants connecting to us through facebook good morning to everyone today's topic is on harnessing customer network in my first session i talked about you know digital disruption and digital business transformation and prior to that we touched upon what digital is we discussed and we agreed that digital means coming together of these innovate innovative technologies that is enabled by connectivity so it is not just many technologies but those technologies are also connected to one another that is creating enormous value and we saw some examples of digital disruption and we saw five areas which existing businesses if they embrace digital project in five areas they can successfully transform their businesses and face the digital disruptors successfully so the first area was uh, customer the second was competition third one was data and fourth was uh, innovation and the fifth one was value proposition we kind of uh, finished with that and we said we will go into each and every area a uh, little more deeply in the next session so this is what the uh, next session is after that with respect to digital business transformation and uh, we are going to be talking about customer networks which is the first area now what is the objective of this uh, session uh, at the end of the session i hope all of you will have a clear idea about what a customer network is and what it means to businesses and you will also distinguish between traditional marketing funnel customer network marketing funnel we will explain to you uh, what a marketing funnel means uh, because some of you from non business background might might be new to you and we will distinguish that between you know we we will distinguish the customer network marketing funnel from a traditional marketing funnel and we will explain in detail customer network behaviors in the digital world and also how companies can use those behaviors to create customer strategies now the moment we talk about customer strategies and especially somebody who who's driven to create value for the businesses immediately will go and uh, implement certain projects or certain ideas in these digital technologies now i don't have to explain about these uh, technologies because all of you are familiar and most of you are you will be using these technologies but one thing i will say is whenever you're working for a company you want to create a transformation if you want to embrace digital do not focus on these technologies separately 
okay that is the wrong way and that is not the right approach we will teach you as an mba student as a techno manager uh, especially coming out of uh, rv as imsr we will teach you certain frameworks as to how to think systematically so do not just start a company facebook page or a youtube page or an instagram page and start posting uh, things yes we will be doing that but before that you should understand and you should follow certain systems uh, one after the other so what should you be what should you be thinking about initially instead of digital technologies you should be thinking about customer right so customers and how they are connected to one another this is what you should have a firm grasp about how each business's customers are connected to one another and this that is what customer network mean which we will explain a little more uh, deeply in the next slides now before we go to the uh, customer network let us understand how a mass market model works uh, prior to the digital revolution so a uh, company was the uh, central focus of this model company is what will create value by value i mean certain benefits certain tangible benefits so not only in terms of uh, products or services but also in terms of advertising and promotions and branding so these are all certain values uh, that uh, uh, company produces for its customers now how was it producing so imagine pre digital world the only mass market channels that we had were tv radio and uh, so on and so forth and companies were taking out very expensive time slots and they were advertising for the huge market could not dissect the market into smaller chunks because because it was very very expensive and imagine sitting in front of a tv like people from all walks of life uh, will be watching a program and you cannot target a specific program for a, a specific uh, segment let's say you want to uh, target uh, kids under 15 but in the room there will be people across ages all ages so you cannot target so companies usually was targeting them generally through mass communication and similarly you could not produce for different micro segments because it was very very expensive and this is where concept called as economies of scale comes into play you will learn about economies of scale in uh, your probably economics courses but i want but i would like you to touch you know i would like to touch on this topic because this is very very important and as a manager uh, look at businesses through the lens of economies of scale economies of scale is nothing but every company has two types of costs one is a variable cost and a fixed cost now what are variable costs variable costs are as your sales increases your costs also should increase so some of the examples might be electricity costs some uh, because if you're going to use if you're going to use your product for if you're going to have more sales then generally you will use up more electricity and even uh, employees uh, if you're going to have again a uh, lot of sales then your number of employees will increase as well so these are variable costs so your fixed costs are uh, the cost of uh, building you will not increase or keep new buildings uh, for every additional customer that you get because that will become very expensive so the, the, these are fixed so economies of scale means as your customer base increases your fixed cost increases now think about it this is this is basic common sense right so if you build a building for let's say 1 crore and if you have uh, say 1 lakh customers then if you spread that 1 crore over 1 lakh you will get x amount of rupees per customer now instead of 1 lakh uh, let's say you have 10 lakh customers or 20 lakh customers now the cost of your building will go drastically down then this is what is the uh, concept of economies of scale so basically it is as uh, your volume of uh, production grows your cost of production comes down especially your fixed cost because uh, you can spread those costs over the more number of units right now this is how the companies were operating the past slide that you saw that's how companies were operating in the pre digital world now after the digital revolution yes company is still the center and they are still creating a lot of value but we saw this uh, diagram the both the diagrams in our previous session now the some of the value is created by the customer also now what do i mean by uh, value uh, created by customers now if you look at uh, the diagram uh, you can see customers are connected to digital platforms like uh, blogs forums twitter youtube and everything they share their thoughts ideas pictures on youtube 
and companies are also connected to these platforms and they share their product launches and uh, their achievements of their employees their, uh, of the company and everything on the social media. Not only that, customers also comment different products and uh, for example, in Amazon, if you see, uh, most of my purchases, at, uh, at least I don't know about you, but I'm sure you also look at the comments of the products, reviews before you purchase. Now, this is a very, very big value for the company. Now, who's creating this value? Uh, definitely, the comments are not put by the company because that will be sort of almost uh, unethical for you to go and uh, engineer comments about your own company. Uh, it will be more ethical and more, uh, uh, it will create more value if your customers come and uh, review your product favorably. So this is what I mean by customers are also creating value. Now this is, this is, this does not apply only to uh, reviewing your product. Uh, there are uh, in Wikipedia example, last time we saw customers are also co-creating your product. So which means they are creating your product uh, together with you uh, because uh, as readers, it is we who go and create content for Wikipedia company, right? And, uh, and we also are creators and we are also our consumers. So consumers, and customers create a lot more value in this customer network model. Now, this might all seem obvious to you, uh, but if if you if you kind of uh, if you have a separate model like this in your uh, in your uh, consciousness, only then you will use these concepts at an appropriate time. You'll understand that when we. Uh, deal with the subject a lot more. But uh, for now, just understand separately what a customer network model is and start differentiating it with a uh, traditional model. Okay, so that's why these pictures come in handy. Now, uh, I would like to conduct a quiz right now. I would like you to answer this. Uh, I would like you to tell me what are the examples of creating customer value in the business? We have 50, 60% of you have voted. So we have 74%. I think some of you might have some trouble looking at uh, this poll. It will be on the top. If there is a red uh, color, then if you can just click on that red, you can see the uh, thing because you should get used to uh, answering these polls because this is how we can engage with you and we can kind of learn together. This is the power of digital. Uh, you know, This is not only one way you can learn, not just from the person who's doing the lecture, but we can learn from you know other participants as well. So I'm going to end this poll and share this result. As expected, 72% uh, of you have said all of the above, which is the right answer. And some of you have chosen individual uh, areas. Now I can understand why you have chosen innovative products and advertising after sales service. Now all these things are definitely adding value. Now right after a customer gets a raw material, whatever it is doing, uh, transform the raw material into a finished product and also serving the customer after uh, the product will be considered as uh, you know, creating value for the business. So again, the correct answer is all of the about. I'm going to start another poll, which will be on economies of scale. So I've explained uh, what economies of scale means. Uh, take time to go over this question. I'm, I made it a little challenging for some of you. That is by design, I've made it a little challenging because uh, after this quiz, when I discuss the uh, answers, you will understand economies of scale. So it looks like I'm, while you're answering, I'm going to end the poll now. I'll end the poll and I'll share the results. We have a tie here. One in four, 46%, and one in three, 46 percent so that is what i kind of made it a little confusing and uh, it is fair i'll give uh, equal points to both the uh, teams who have chosen one and four and one and three but the correct answer is one and three not one and four now why is one and three because uh, i think all of you have none of you have chosen uh, hand craftsman carving products by hand so which is which is very good which means that you have understood uh, uh, economies of scale. Now, and uh, all of you have chosen, uh, or most of you have chosen automobile companies producing cars in large numbers. 
Now, why am I saying uh, one big area with the total population size of one crore? So let's say you have a 10 member team. What would uh, save you money sending everybody to one area, let's say to an area like Coimbatore and focusing their energies on one area or sending two guys to uh, Trivandrum, two guys to Cochin, two guys to Tirupur, two to Palladam and two to Coimbatore. Now, if you look at uh, the second scenario, you're splintering the cost and yet you're reaching the same one crore people. So that's why sending the entire team to one geographical area is will create economies of scale. But uh, having said that, I give uh, appreciations to both the teams of this result. We understand uh, this customer network model and let's go to this funnel. This is called as the marketing funnel, traditional marketing funnel. Can you see the heading there? So this is the traditional marketing funnel, okay? Now, I'll explain this uh, thing to you a little. Uh, so just, just give it your attention. Let's say you are producing a brand new product. Let's say you're producing a soap, okay? So you've all started a company together and you're producing soap. So what should you do? And you name your uh, com uh, the soap brand as ABC Soap. Okay, so it's a very, very bland name, but uh, nevertheless, uh, your now the first thing that you have to do is to create awareness about your brand. So that is the first stage in the marketing funnel. Now, if after you create the awareness, you should get your customers to consider your brand, right? So what do I mean by consideration? you will be talking about certain features of your product. So whether it is for a dry skin or for uh, a moisture, uh, uh, you know, oily skin and so on and so forth. And so that people will start considering your product. Now, the funnel is becoming narrow and narrow as you go down because you will not have the same amount of uh, eyeballs or customer. I mean, I won't say customer because they have not bought your product yet the same number of uh, attention, the same number of people paying attention to your brand uh, as uh, it, will, it will start going down, right? So at the awareness stage, you can create mass awareness, but only uh, a smaller chunk of them will be uh, willing to consider your product. So that's why the funnel is getting narrower. So after consideration, uh, you should create aware, uh, preference for your product. Now, I will tell you how you can do that in the next slide, but uh, preferences, uh, they will compare your product with uh, competitors products. And as a marketer, you should, you should nudge your customers to um, uh, prefer your product over your competitor's product. And after uh, they uh, prefer your product, naturally you should get them to come to the store and buy the product. And once they buy the product, you should uh, establish loyalty with uh, your existing customers. So we will see how each and every uh, stage is progressing in the next slide and what are some of the strategies uh, people were using uh, to move people from every stage. Now, as a marketer, as a company, you should consciously devise strategies at each and every stage so that you get customers to move from one stage to the other. As an end user, we might not be aware that these are very carefully thought out strategies. We might think that it is just pure advertisement, but uh, as an MBA student, you should, clear, uh, you should have a, a better perspective about marketing and you should first of all know that these are clearly different stages and uh, as a company, you should take steps to move people from one stage to the other. Now in the traditional, so we are still in the traditional uh, world now. When I say traditional, it is the pre-digital era. So using TV and uh, other marketing channels, radios, billboards, uh, and other marketing channels. So how do you create awareness? You take out, uh, as we discussed earlier, TV, radio, and outdoor advertisements, right? By advertising your product on these mediums, you create awareness about the product. The next is moving people to consideration stage. How can you do that? You can create brochures and you can even send direct mail to their homes. Now, direct mail is an increasingly, it's still very popular, right? So, uh, and uh, you can also insert uh, certain brochures in uh, pamphlets in newspapers and uh, you can start getting people uh, 
uh, know about your product a little more intimately about the features, about the benefits that your product creates for the customer. That is the consideration stage. Now, when it comes to preference, uh, you will uh, do product testing uh, and uh, you will you will give customers access to your products, free samples and everything, so that they start understanding that your product is better for them. When I say better, don't think that there is only one better product. Now, for every set of customers, for a group of customers, one product will be good. Let's say most expensive soap will not be the best soap for middle class customer or for people in the uh, lower income bracket. So for them, the best product is something that is affordable and yet uh, helping them uh, finish or accomplish the goal that they are using the product for. So you please have that in mind. So when I say best product, it is for a specific set of customers. So uh, after you move uh, certain customers through product test and comparisons, you get them to buy the product. Now this, this was traditionally done through in-store purchase. And finally, loyalty was established through reward points. Uh, now, every uh, at least a big retail shops have cards where every time you go and purchase, they'll give you points and you can redeem those points for a special discount at a later stage. Now, this is how the traditional marketing funnel was working. Now, so I wanted to have this quiz, but uh, even before uh, coming to this stage, I kind of gave it uh, earlier because I felt that was the right time. So ignore this slide. Now, how, how has the marketing funnel changed in the customer network world? Now, creating awareness, what do you do? You go and search, let's say you want to buy a soap, right? What do you, uh, if you are looking for an economical soap, you just go to Google and you say cheap soap. So the moment you say cheap soap or ex less expensive soap, uh, Google throws a set of results in front of you. So now that the brand or the company that comes first in your search, there are lots and lots of things that the company has to do to come first because that itself is a separate discipline in digital marketing called search engine marketing or search engine optimization, SEO and SEM. And companies are spending uh, crores of money to get listed in the first. That is a very conscious strategy they adopt. So, uh, and they also do blogs. Uh, companies write blogs or companies get influencers to write blogs about the customers. So now contrast that with the traditional broadcast mediums. So how do you move the, uh, from, uh, them from awareness to consideration? Uh, you, when they go to online and research your product, they read the user reviews and they start understanding how good your product is, what your promise and how good the product stands up to your promise. And uh, how do you get them to uh, prefer your products? Again, uh, you will have uh, as a company social network pages, YouTube videos and uh, local search. Now, when you do digital marketing, you'll understand what a local search is. Again, take some conscious strategies. We'll be going through some of these uh, real strategies that companies have implemented in the later slides. For right now, I understand that uh, the mediums they use for getting people to move from consideration to preference is using these uh, things. And how do you get them to take action? Obviously, in the online world, you have uh, uh, e-commerce website and uh, also in-store uh, uh, thing. So don't think that in the digital world, people will have stopped moving away completely because you and I know that's not true. Uh, so even the traditional marketing funnel is still important, but now that alone is not enough. In addition to that, you have to also have customer strategies on these customer networks so that you get people to kind of you know embrace the digital medium and as a company you should be present in all these mediums so this is called as omni channel strategies uh, omni channel strategy is you should have a separate strategy for the traditional mediums and a separate strategy for your customer network uh, mediums uh, branding and the marketing message should be uniform uh, in both uh, the uh, brought, uh, in the traditional and, and in the digital uh, world because if it is opposite to each other then you'll create a lot of confusion finally loyalty how do you create loyalty in the digital world you will get them to come and like your fb twitter uh, page and uh, you will start selling upselling them upselling is something uh, let's say they start buying your product 
uh, you might have a little bit more expensive product. Once they become loyal and they start liking your brand, you can start selling them a uh, little more expensive products to their customers. So this is what is customer network model. Now, there is one addition to the customer network model to the traditional model. If you look at the last uh, bar in the funnel, uh, we have something called as advocacy. Now, what does advocacy mean? Uh, advocacy is you, as a customer, you start talking about your product. Now, this is very, very extremely important, and this is becoming, uh, uh, creating a lot of value for companies because when they, they consciously send you emails now, like anytime I go and stay in a hotel, the moment I check out and I come, they send you, uh, they send me an email and they almost plead, beg me to go, go and uh, do some uh, reviews for them. Uh, if you think this is, uh, you might, you know, initially I was wondering why are they sending so many mails? When you go and do an online booking, the first thing again you uh, read is the reviews. So, uh, you know, I use a lot of online bookings whenever I'm traveling in India and abroad, and uh, I only read the reviews and then select the uh, hotels. So this is not only hotels, this is uh, for pretty much all kinds of uh, businesses. You should get your customers advocate for you, talk about you, and this is this is a very important thing in the customer network uh, model. So now that uh, we understand the differences between uh, these two uh, things, let's take uh, another quiz. But before we, I launch the quiz, I would like to go over. Imagine uh, there is a motorbike dealer, and he's running a campaign near a mall. Uh, where potential customers like you can go and touch, feel, and ask questions about the bike, okay? So which particular behavior is the company? Question number three. And uh, uh, in question number four is company or brand, certain brands are now giving cash back. Credit cards are now giving cash back on the charges you're doing. I think even Paytm used to give cash back. And uh, I think uh, Google Pay is now giving cash back, right? Again, I would like you consumer behavior does company choose to influence. Let me launch the, this is the motorbike. Five percent of you have voted, 61 percent. A lot of you are choosing the right answer. You're already becoming uh, good marketers. Now you're, you're able to differentiate between uh, the different consumer behaviors. And not only that, you're, a, you're able to identify the strategies with each behavior. Almost 77% of you have voted. Unfortunately, I think uh, you cannot uh, vote uh, in Facebook, but uh, uh, after 24, it invariably stops. So, you know, I'm thinking that they are getting, and they are having some problems uh, or they may not be, uh, or they are not able to identify the poll uh, for some reason or the other. It stops at the kind of health. Um, so I'm, I'll end this poll and let's discuss the answer. So the uh, majority of you have chosen uh, your example and which is the right answer. Now, why do you, why are we saying uh, this particular initiative is influencing the preference consumer behavior because uh, by getting your potential customers use this uh, product or test this product they kind of get a sense before actually buying uh, they kind of get a sense of how the product is and they might have done a testing with other motorbikes and uh, they might prefer this bike and they might know your product a little more intimately that's why uh, this strategy closely aligns with the preference consumer behavior. Awareness, it's uh, some of you have chosen awareness. That is not the right answer because uh, by the time you actually go and uh, test a product, invariably now agreed that, uh, uh, you know, some of you might see this product for the first time, but majority, we are always, whenever we have uh, questions like this or whenever strategies are implemented, this is for majority of the for some of you, it might be new, but for majority of them, they might have already known this product either, uh, either from TV ads or anything. And, I, and it's also not action because time of action, you will not be testing the product in a mall per se. You will not buy uh, your product uh, in front of a mall, especially a motorbike. You'll go to the dealer and you'll have the right answer. So I launched the next uh, poll, which is cashback, giving cashback. 50% of you have voted and 22 out of 32 in Zoom. Let's wait for one, two more seconds, and I'll end this. 
poll. Yeah, share the results. The right answer is what most of you have chosen, 58% loyalty. Now, this is what is the distinguishing characteristic of a consumer behavior. If you start giving, you know, uh, loyalty, uh, reward points by form of uh, uh, cash back and everything, uh, you can definitely nudge people to uh, stay even after giving cash back and uh, stuff like this, they may not want to uh, stay for some other reason. But again, we are talking about majority of the customer. So we, we, we now understand uh, the traditional consumer behavior in the traditional scenario and uh, behavior in the digital or the customer network model. Now, those behaviors are based on psychology of the person. So uh, getting them to become aware and consider and, you know, all the rest of the stages is based on psychology. Now, there is also another set of behaviors uh, which uh, has been thoroughly researched at uh, Columbia Business School by a professor named David Rogers, and he has written a fantastic book on this on the digital transformation playbook. Uh, at, a, at some point in time, we'll share uh, uh, those details about the book and uh, we will have a lot of copies of that in our library. But uh, I would urge you to, if, if you can, to start reading the book, not, not immediately. Now he has analyzed almost 2,000 or 3,000 brands and uh, digital, uh, you know, people who are, um, you know, shopping or who, people who are creating value on the digital customer networks. And he has kind of found that there are five core behaviors that people are exhibit. Now, the first one he calls it as access behavior. Let me launch this poll. We have a very eager and an enthusiastic student. The moment I launch the quiz, they are answering it. Good, quick answers coming. 25% of you have voted, which means you're very clear about strategy that they are employing and which behavior they are trying to influence. So Vishal says he didn't get uh, the poll. Uh, everybody would have got the poll, Vishal. I think if you go to the top, so that's what I'm thinking that uh, you're unable to find the poll. That's why some of you are not able to answer. If you go to the top, I even if it's not showing, okay, you got it. Good. Top and uh, kind of keep search on the top, you might get, you'll get it. Vishal got it. Good. So I'll end this poll. Uh, 22. So usually two more will vote. Uh, 23. Okay. So majority of you have said uh, customize, which is the right answer because uh, uh, if you go to Amazon and if you have bought, you need not even buy. You might, uh, even if you don't buy, you would have browsed for certain products, right? So after one or two browsing, uh, even before browsing, it will kind of give a generic recommendation. And after you start browsing products, start uh, uh, paying attention to the recommendations. It will align with your previous searches. So uh, I think uh, uh, from now on, uh, whenever you go to Amazon, Flipkart or uh, YouTube or Netflix, whatever, uh, start looking at how accurately it is recommending. And invariably, if, you're, uh, if you go to YouTube, uh, if you click on the uh, recommended uh, video without searching, then it means uh, they are highly successful. So imagine, you know, you go to a store and before even you ask them what you want, if they are able to give you the product, how elated and how happy you'll be. That is a different level of customer service, right? Now that was not possible in the traditional world. Now that is possible in the digital world. Why? Because uh, in the digital world, you're able to uh, get and analyze data based on your searches, based on your website, uh, behavior, browsing behavior, and lots of other data is available for you, uh, for the company to uh, analyze and to recommend. So this will be the last quiz. Interesting answers are coming through. Interesting. I think the discussion will be a bit interesting because this time the majority is not right. So far, the majority was right, but uh, this time it will be the minority. Well, not necessarily 0%. Uh, the right answer is access. Why? Because uh, remember we talked initially, uh, people want easy access. Uh, you know, we gave an example of Ola. The reason why you're using Ola is because you're able to
get your goal accomplished with the touch of a button. Now, uh, traditional retail companies are having e-commerce website. I was going to a shop all the time. Now, many of us want to go to a shop, especially uh, now women like uh, shopping. Uh, this is not a cliche. I mean, this is this is this has been proven uh, in the uh, research that women like uh, shopping more, and uh, I think we all can agree to that uh, particular aspect. So yes, people are going to retail companies, but uh, these retail shops are now increasingly having e-commerce websites because they do not want to lose out to the traditional uh, to the uh, uh, digital companies like e-commerce and everything. So Walmart and other big tradis uh, traditional retail companies are having e-commerce because they want to be accessible to the customer. Right. So a good attempt, uh, but right. So now we have looked at uh, the two types of behaviors and we look at some five case studies, uh, very simple case studies, how people uh, how brands have uh, utilized, understood these behaviors and created strategies so that uh, they could create better value to their customer. Okay, so what kinds of products, services and experience will inspire other behaviors and especially advocacy, uh, advocacy in customer networks. Remember, we talked about advocacy because that is extremely, extremely important. So you should not only influence uh, uh, people to exhibit the other behaviors, but you should also have strategies so that people advocate for your brand. So the first one is Disney. Uh, now, many of you, Disney is not available. Uh, when I say Disney, this is a theme park I'm talking about. Many of you might have heard about Disney and uh, you might not have gone to a Disney park. First started in US and then in Europe and now in Asia, uh, they have a huge Disney park in uh, Hong Kong. But there are Disney-like parks in uh, India. In Cochin, you have uh, that park in Cochin, uh, uh, I think Vega Land and in Bangalore, uh, oh, full screen. Okay, hang on. Wonderla, yes, Suvinia, yeah, ma'am. Uh, you're right. Uh, Wonderla is uh, another theme park. Now, Disney theme park has a omni-channel experience. So this is strategy they adopted to influence the access behavior of the customer. Now, what are they doing? If you go to Disney site, you can pretty much have a excellent user experience not only buying tickets for your disney theme park but also you can get to know about the disney characters just just go to disney uh, website after the session and see how accessible uh, they have made their website it will load and uh, uh, user friendly that is one aspect they also are selling something called as a magic band you know i've gone to these theme parks and first of all going and standing in the line to buy tickets itself is a big show. So after internet, we were buying tickets through uh, the uh, internet. So that part was solved. But now with the magic band, they are able, like if you buy the magic band and if you load certain, you know, it's a, it's, it's a wallet kind of a thing. You can do shopping inside the Disney park using the magic band. And for certain rides, if you have a magic band and if you, uh, you can get priority access. So obviously uh, the magic band is a little more expensive. You have to pay a little more for than the ticket price but uh, for that the uh, benefits you get is you don't have to wait in the la line uh, especially during summer times when you travel to a disney theme park full of people uh, for certain uh, popular rides you might have to stand in the queue for almost two hours and with your kids and uh, with all the luggage that you're carrying inside the theme park, it's a very, very difficult thing. So this magic band, if you buy, it will give you uh, access again. Uh, in it will be it will be definitely crowded as well there, but it will be a lot less than the traditional line. And as I said, you can use A for your... Also, Disney theme parks have hotels in the uh, parks. Now you can use a Disney band to open your door. So it also acts as a access key to your hotel door. Uh, this is uh, extremely useful to customers because many times these days they are giving access key and when you keep it in your pocket and if you have a cell phone there the access key becomes disabled because of certain uh, electromagnetic uh, interruptions and you have to after going to the fourth floor your access key will not open and you have to come back to the reception and then re I mean, they do something uh, to enable the access so you got you have to go back now with this magic band you just show the magic band in front of your door it right so these are all certain strategies they have adopted to make their company accessible to consumer we'll also look at other strategies Strategies. This is a strategy L'Oreal. I'm, I'm sure especially girls and ladies will know
know this brand. L'Oreal is a cosmetic brand, especially for ladies. I'm sure they have certain products for men as well. We talked about how consumers are engaging with content and how they are willing to spend time if you have good content about your uh, uh, products. Now, the content we said should not be about selling your products. It, not, it should not be hard selling. It should, it should create value because the consumer by solving certain problems. Now, makeup.com, please again visit this website after this uh, session is over. We'll share this presentation to you. I'll see if we can share it in the uh, chat, chat uh, session so that you can have it uh, and you can uh, go back and look at uh, the slide. Uh, just go and even if you're not interested in makeup, uh, there is a place where where you can go and uh, you know key in your email address please key in your email address and they will start sending you content so this is not for you to understand about all the nuances of uh, you know makeup products well if you're interested yes you know go ahead and use the content but for others who are not interested see how engaging the content is what kind of content they are sending you they will not flood you they will probably send you one or two every week and uh, you can opt out whenever you want but uh, as a manager i think it will give you a very good perspective of how brands are using this particular behavior and how this uh, content strategy is uh, attracting customers towards the brand. It is extremely, extremely um, uh, useful. Now, if you go to makeup.com, you can browse the rest of the content and you can see how they are not even, they, uh, they are not even uh, uh, having their brand name uh, in a bold or in a very big way. If you see uh, L'Oreal is in a very, very small letters. So subtly they are talking about the brand, but they are giving you, they are solving certain pressing problems uh, and thereby attracting you to come and buy the products. So this is an example of engage strategy. Now, customize. Now, how has a brand used customize strategy? So Coke, the sales of Coke was going down in Australia. Uh, so they wanted to see how they can revitalize the brand and compete more effectively. So they took popular names, uh, especially in the Western world, John, George, uh, Lisa, and uh, 100 or 200 names, which are extremely popular, which majority of them will have. So in my generation, my name was very popular. Kendall was a name that at least 10 people in a class will have. So similarly, there are Smiths uh, of the world. They are very popular. Actually printed Coke cans with their names, with the popular names, and they started selling it. And uh, you might think that this is a very simple uh, strategy, but customized strategy revitalized the brand and people with a particular name, plenty, even if they were not drinking Coke, just seeing uh, your name attached to a huge brand like Coke was thrilling enough for them to go and buy that product. And not only that, they bought uh, Cokes as a present for uh, their friends who had names. So this was also a birthday gift, uh, anniversary gift along with other guests. So look at how they have utilized this customized strategy and revitalized. I mean, the sales uh, drastically went up. I do not know the exact number, but uh, it was in millions of dollars. So uh, as a manager, if you can start uh, understanding the behaviors and if you start uh, analyzing these behaviors and come up with strategies, you can really value. Now, uh, the fourth one we talked about was uh, Connect Strategy and uh, Citibank effectively used this Connect Strategy. I'll explain how. We thought, uh, you know, we told that almost every band, uh, brand has their Facebook or Instagram, Twitter accounts. Twitter was, uh, Twitter is especially popular now with uh, brands because Citibank, I think this happened in US. Citibank, there were a lot of customer queries that were happening in Twitter. So in Twitter, especially when brands, when people talk about brands, they always share certain problems or certain queries they have about certain products of the brand. Now, uh, you know, Citibank started answering those queries in real time in Twitter. Imagine you going and typing a question product of theirs about a credit card or a checking account or a savings account or some other investment products. And in a few minutes, uh, imagine somebody from Citibank answering your query. Uh, now implement this. Other banks also tried, but they were not successful. But uh, Citibank was able to successfully implement the strategy because they had an extensive training program for customer service agents on Twitter. Uh, they had a social customer strategy department and they trained uh, their people not only with products, but also in answering the products in real time with customers. So 
the uh, you know after some time they kind of analyzed uh, the uh, customer service numbers and they found out 38% of customers queries were answered in real time in twitter now this was a very very big boon for citibank and they saw some real traction to their products after this trial now finally i told you that uh, at rvs we implemented uh, a collaborate strategy in rvs imsr where you're studying right now uh, we conducted a photophilia photographic contest where we asked students to take photographs and share it on their facebook profile and also on our uh, facebook page and we invited their friends to come and like the page or comment on the photograph people or you know the uh, contestants collaborated with their friends digitally and invited them to come and look at the photograph and vote for them now all this happened uh, to uh, platform and why did we do it the uh, what, i mean what, what was the result we we saw that people actually got new friends they met new people after this project because they reached out to our uh, students in the other departments uh, in the undergraduate departments and they invited them to come and share, view their uh, photos and uh, uh, you know and they became uh, some real good friendship the way we created value for uh, our students this uh, pretty much sums up uh, our presentation uh, today and uh, we actually saw what a customer network mean and we also distinguished between uh, traditional marketing funnel and customer network marketing funnel and we saw some of the behaviors the five behaviors and we we saw how customer strategies were devised to use those customer network behavior again this is uh, you know there is if some of you are interested at a later stage uh, after the semester starts if you want to Uh, develop uh, a real time project uh, for a specific company and there are some more material that we will go, go over under each and every behavior there are certain uh, uh, sub behaviors which you should understand and uh, how there is also a framework which will teach you as to how to implement a strategy for a specific company now there are two things that i would like you uh, to take uh, after the session one is uh, as a manager you should start understanding the behaviors and you should relate it to customer strategies because then particular skill will become extremely extremely useful for you and uh, not only that uh, you should also implement and see how businesses can create value in a very cost effective way if we were if you if you had to do this uh, in the traditional world taking out an ad as i said as an example costs you lakhs and lakhs of rupees or sometimes in crores for larger uh, uh, tv channels but uh, you can do most lot of these things for almost next to nothing all it requires is a nuanced or a subtle understanding of customer network behaviors and coming up with strategies because most of you are digital natives what i mean is you know you're all born in a uh, era when all these social networks have become popular so you're all born into the social network uh era i would say so you understand social networks much better you understand that the digital networks much better than most of us here so you can definitely devise much better strategies also going forward and uh, thank you one uh, once again for uh, for joining and uh, this particular video and the last video will be in our rvs sarugal page we request you to go and uh, like this page because uh, we will have uh, many such videos there are lots of entertainment programs that we are doing online uh, we have a separate uh, a uh, person by the name mr samanyu satish who has brought in artists from all over the world i literally mean all over the world we have artists performing on this page from russia from colombia from south america uh, in in south america and from london and from eastern europe kashmir north india from tamil nadu from all over the place people have come and uh, people have uh, kind of uh, you know done programs so please go to rvs seragal page browse the feed and uh, look at uh, how rvs is embracing these digital technologies you will get a sense of what we are talking and uh, once again thank you one and all i uh, share this uh, presentation uh, otherwise i i'll get uh, our team to email uh, this presentation the first presentation of mine and this uh, presentation i uh, just browse uh, some of the uh, websites that you have in this to see in this uh, presentation you'll understand and uh, just go and uh, see in your email address so good luck to all of you see you in your uh, in my next